Want to know how to configure security zones on your Juniper SRX device firewall? Well, in this video, that's exactly what I'll be showing you how to do. So if I hop in my lab environment, we can see that I currently just have two devices and you're like, where are all the other devices, right? Well, it's good to understand because when you think of SRXs, there's two things that you commonly, uh, terminology that you'll come into contact with and that's security zones and security policies. And they're two different things. And the best explanation that I've gotten that I've actually shared on this channel before is that uh, a service manager shared with me that when you look at it, security zones represent traffic that is is coming to the SRX device itself, to the firewall. Whereas security zones regulate traffic that is going through the SRX device. And here's what I mean by that. I have my VSRX here and it's brand freaking new. I just spun this device up with minimal configuration. I just set a root password and I configured it with the IP address for this layer three interface connecting down to this PC. If I hop on it and I do a show configuration, you can see that's all that's on the box. And vice versa, I just have an IP on this PC with the respective IP address of 10.0.1.10 on that slash 24 network. So because these devices are on the same network, you would expect that they are able to communicate. But you know, out of the box, that isn't how things work for Juniper. Now you have to assign your interfaces to a zone and then specify what services and protocols are allowed within that zone. And so because by default in my configuration, I have no zones configured, nothing's going to work. And I can verify that by hopping on my PC. And if I do a show IP just to see its details, I'll go ahead and attempt to ping the SRX device 10.0.1.1. And you'll see that it times out. And that's because that SRX device is denying that traffic by default. So what I'll need to do to go ahead and bring this to life is create a security zone. So I'll enter into the edit mode of the configuration and I'll issue the command set security zone, security zone, and I'll call this zone trust. And I'll specify the interface that I want to add to this trusted zone as GE000.2 or GE002. And you would think that's enough, but it's not because you can really get granular and specific as to what you allow and permit within this particular zone. So if I do a show security zone, we'll see, I just have my interface assigned, but now I want to go ahead and specify what protocols and services are allowed within this zone. So I'll do a set security zone, security zone, trust system services, oh, well, host inbound traffic for the system services. There's quite a lot of things that I could permit here, but I'll just do all since this is a lab environment. The only thing I really need is ping. Um, and I'll hit the up arrow. Now for protocols, I want to allow all as well. And I'll go ahead and do once again, show security just to, you can see how this looks. And I'll go ahead and give this commit and quit. And so now that I've added that interface to this zone where it's permitting these services that if it receives uh, um, or detects any of these services, it'll allow it, my ping should now be successful. So if I rerun that ping command, hey, you can see I get round traffic. Well, that's the end of this video. I hope you found this video helpful as to understanding zones and why you would need to put them in place in order to allow traffic to reach your firewall. As always, thanks for viewing and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.